Hello, second graders. Welcome to Science with me, Ms. Taylor. I would like to tell you a little bit about igneous rocks today. And a lot of this information comes from a book by Melissa Stewart, and it's called Igneous Rocks. So some of our goals for today, we're going to learn two ways that igneous rocks are formed. We're going to identify the characteristics of igneous rocks. So in other words, what makes an, a rock an igneous rock? So if you find a rock outside, you should be able to, kind of after learning a little bit about igneous rocks, you should be able to tell if a rock that you pick up might be an igneous rock. We'll learn about that. And we're going to learn the names of several igneous rocks today. So as a little review, a rock is a natural solid material made up of minerals. So we know and we learned previously um, and we had a fun video from Miss Schultz where she was baking a rock, wink, wink, a rock. So we know that a rock is made of minerals just like a cookie is made of different ingredients. So you might have um, some chocolate chips and some oats or some nuts in a cookie. And a rock is kind of like that. It's just a mixture of minerals. All right. We know that the earth has three main kinds of rock. There are igneous rocks. We're going to learn about those today. Metamorphic rocks. We'll learn about those later. And sedimentary rocks. And we'll also learn about those a little bit later in our science unit. And each kind of rock forms in a different way. So today we are going to learn about this first kind, igneous. All right. So here we have a picture of a few different kinds of igneous rocks. And it says igneous rocks are made from molten rock. And that's kind of a fancy word. That means really hot and kind of melted. When rocks get so hot, they melt. Ooh. So they're made from molten rock that is cooled one of two ways. So slowly, below the surface of the earth, or quickly, poof, above the surface of the earth. And that's what give the, gives these rocks their different textures. So all igneous rocks are formed when magma, and that's the name for that molten rock underneath the crust of the earth, when it kind of breaks through the crust of the earth and it cools down and hardens. So that's kind of how all igneous rock are formed, but they can form slowly or quickly. So igneous rock is formed from a soft fluid substance called magma. And magma is molten, which is a word that means like hot and melted, hot melted rock. Igneous rock forms when magma cools down and hardens. So when we have that word magma, I kind of think of... Um, if you've seen molasses, it's kind of this really thick syrup, and um, it's really thick and um, kind of just moves very slowly. It, it moves, it flows, but very slowly. So I kind of think of magma as kind of like this thick syrupy um, substance. So when the hot molten rock is under the Earth's crust, we call it magma. So when it's underneath the crust of the Earth, when we don't see it, it's magma. But when it breaks through the crust, we call it lava. And you've probably heard that before, lava. An igneous rock can form slowly or quickly. So there's kind of two different ways that igneous rock can form. So one way igneous rocks form when magma from Earth's mantle, remember the mantle is underneath the crust, and when that cools and hardens slowly. So when that, um, when that magma comes through the crust of the earth, then we call it lava. When it cools down slowly, that is one way that igneous rock is formed. Um, and here we have a picture of this happening very slowly. And it says here that these, the Hawaiian islands, so you've probably heard of Hawaii, the Hawaiian islands were formed as lava slowly piled up and kind of seeps through the crust of the earth very slowly over thousands of years. And eventually those piles of cooled magma or lava um, it kind of piles up enough so it kind of pokes above the surface of the ocean and it forms the Hawaiian Islands. So one way it can, and this can happen very slowly. And this is kind of a picture from our notes sheet that we take in school. 
that we write, um, we kind of draw a little picture about how this happens slowly. So here's my earth, there's the crust of the earth, and underneath the crust we have this hot molten melted rock uh, called magma. And we know this layer underneath the crust is called the mantle. And when it slowly seeps through and kind of comes out these little cracks in the crust and it cools down, and we, I could write another label here, it's called lava, but then when it cools and hardens, it becomes igneous rock. Okay, so now igneous rocks can also form quickly. So they can form when magma from the Earth's mantle rises, cools, and hardens quickly. And this is called a volcano. So um, when magma, so here we are, here's the underneath the crust of the earth um, in the mantle, and this is called the magma chamber. Actually, we'll learn more about volcanoes pretty soon. But magma comes up through the crust when it comes up quickly and then turns into lava and it cools and hardens. Um, very quickly, it's called a volcano, and um, that is another way that igneous rocks are formed. And let me just scoot myself out of the way there. There we go. So here is a picture of a volcano. There are about 500 active volcanoes in the world today. Don't worry, none in Minnesota. Yes. No earthquakes for us, no volcanoes for us, no hurricanes. Okay, so there are about 500 volcanoes active volcanoes in the world today. And active means they're still possible that they could erupt, that they could spurt lava out the top. Most volcanoes form in places where those big plates of the earth, where they meet. Now, not always, sometimes they can seep through little cracks, but most of the time they're at those places where the plates meet. Do you remember what that's called? Yeah, faults, nice job. When a volcano erupts, a gray cloud of, oops, that should be dusk, dust, not ask. <laughs> a, a gray cloud of dust fills the air and lava flows out of the volcano. Ooh. So when lava from volcanoes shoots or spills out onto the surface, it cools so quickly that crystals, those little shiny bits inside of rocks and minerals, crystals don't have time to grow very large. Um, some rocks, like obsidian, and here's an example of obsidian, have crystals that are so tiny that the rocks look like shiny black glass. And some of you may have seen obsidian before. It's really neat. Yeah, it looks like shiny black glass. And so obsidian and other rocks that you can't really see any crystals in them, that means that the lava has cooled so quickly that the crystals haven't had time to form. And obsidian, this special kind of rock, was also used by Native Americans to make tools and weapons such as arrowheads, and they also used it, um, early people used it to make uh, masks, mirrors, and jewelry. Now sometimes uh, lava can cool slowly. And when that magma gets kind of trapped near the top of the mantle, near the near the surface, and when it, it comes through the surface and then it cools slowly, crystals have time to form. It's kind of like it's cooling down really slowly and the little um, crystals inside have time to form. So here's an example. This is, this is a piece of granite. And it says you can see the crystals of feldspar, mica, and quartz so these are the names of the little crystals that make up granite. The red specks in this sample are made of feldspar. And so this looks very different from obsidian. So obsidian, you can't even see any of the crystals because it's cooled so quickly. But granite is cooled slowly so we can see the crystals there. And here are a couple more examples of some igneous rocks. So gabbro and basalt. And they're made of the same minerals, pyroxene, feldspar, and olivine. So the same minerals, but they look different because gabbro, this one has cooled slowly and has much larger crystals. Whereas basalt has cooled quickly and it didn't have time for the crystals to form. So that's kind of interesting. These are made of the same minerals, but because of the way that they've cooled at different speeds, they look very different. 
Oh, now this is a really neat um, picture here of Sugarloaf Mountain. And Sugarloaf Mountain is in Brazil. Look at how neat that looks. It says some of the most famous rock formations in the world are made of igneous rock that formed deep underground. Sugarloaf Mountain in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil was exposed as wind and water eroded all the softer rock around it. So it used to be surrounded by kind of some other kinds of rock that's not, not as hard as igneous rock. And eventually the wind and the water kind of wore away or eroded the softer rock and formed this really neat landmark. I mean, look at how big it is. It's huge. And then you can kind of see these are like hotels and apartment buildings down here. Oh, here's another cool example of igneous rocks. It's called Giant's Causeway in Ireland. There are many ancient legends that try to explain how Giant's Causeway in Northern Ireland formed. Today, we know these step-like columns are made of basalt. As the rock is slowly eroded, kind of worn away by the sea, it breaks into blocks that look like a huge staircase. So that's kind of neat. Oh, and one other example that is really neat that some of you may have visited in Wyoming, it's called Devil's Tower. And this is also a kind of igneous rock. It says, according to an ancient Native American legend, when a group of girls were, was chased by an angry bear, they ran as far as they could and then climbed up a rock where they hoped they would be safe. As the bear jumped and clawed at his sides, the rock grew taller to protect the girls. The rock, which Northern Plains tribes call Bear's Lodge, was considered a sacred site. So kind of this legend that these girls were trying to escape from a bear and the rock was kind of protecting them. And as the girls climbed and the bear was chasing them, the rock grew taller to protect them. Isn't that a neat story? And this is the same, um, this is the same um, picture of the rock. It's just this one is at like sunset and I thought the light was really neat. So the same um, same rock structure, just a different time of day. And in 1906, President Theodore Roosevelt declared this rock as the, na as the nation's first national monument. So that's kind of neat. And it is in Wyoming. Scientists believe it is the core of an ancient volcano. Isn't that neat? I thought that was pretty cool. All right, a few more facts about igneous rocks. So some examples we've kind of looked at are basalt, um, oh, excuse me, granite, basalt, obsidian, pumice, and there's a picture of pumice down here, and gabbro. And basalt is a very common igneous rock. You can find basalt all over the earth. It is the heaviest and densest rock on earth. And um, of all the kinds of rocks, igneous rock is, um, we have the most of it on the earth. So, um, pumice, so here's an example of pumice. Pumice is very, very light. It's the lightest rock on earth. And there's these little holes that we can see in pumice and they're filled with air that was trapped when lava cooled quickly. The word igneous comes from a Latin term meaning made from fire. Oh, igneous, made from fire. And igneous rocks are the most common rocks on earth's crust. The entire sea floor is made of igneous rock. <gasps> And so is the moon. Isn't that cool? The whole moon is made of igneous rock. And so is the floor of all of the oceans. Wow, that's pretty awesome. Um, and one type of rock that is very common and, and used um, all over the world as a building material is called granite. People use igneous rocks in many ways. Granite is one kind of igneous rock that is used as a building material because it is tough and durable. Oh, so there's another typing mistake here. <laughs> its strength makes it a good choice for sculptures, countertops, tombstones, and buildings. The walls of the Empire State Building in New York City are made of granite. So um, a lot of buildings are made of granite. Uh, artists use it for sculptures. People use it as tombstones because they last a really long time. Um, people also use it as countertops. So nowadays, if people are um, maybe building a new house and they might get to choose what they want in their counter in their kitchen, a lot of times people will choose granite. I know my mom has granite on her countertop and she can just put like a hot pan right from the oven 
and put it on the countertop and the countertop will be just fine because the granite is so tough and durable. But at my house, and we have kind of, we have wood, like a butcher block counter. If I put a hot pan on there, it would burn the wood. But granite's very strong, very tough and durable. So people like to use it um, as building materials. All right, so some of our goals for today were to learn two ways igneous rocks are formed. So we know that igneous rocks can form slowly or quickly. So we learned about that today. We identified some characteristics of igneous rocks. And um, one of them that is very important is that igneous rocks are very, very hard and tough and durable. So they're very strong rocks. And we've learned the names of several igneous rocks. So we just talked about granite uh, and how granite, we can see the little crystals there. So it must have cooled slowly. And then we learned about this shiny black glass one. It's called obsidian. And Native American people used it to make um, tools. And the reason they, they um, like to use it to make tools and kind of weapons is that it was, it's very hard and durable, but it's, all, it's also kind of easy to chip. So they could kind of whittle it or um, kind of carve it away to make like a point for like an arrowhead or something. And then basalt is like the most common kind of rock on the earth. All right, so that is a little bit about igneous rocks, and I hope you enjoyed learning about this amazing kind of rock. And if you want to impress your friends and neighbors, tell them, do you know that the moon is made of igneous rock? I think they'll be impressed. All right, so uh, let's see. Second graders, have a wonderful rest of the day, and I hope to see you next time. We'll learn more about rocks and minerals. Bye.